Well hello the darlings, welcome to Sandra Stolly's Kitchen Sensations. I'm Sandra Stolly, this is my kitchen, and today we're going to make a sensational summer slice for you. It's one of my all time favourites, it's called a zucchini slice. So let's get straight to it shall we, and I'll walk you through the ingredients that you're going to need to prepare this dish. Okay, first of all you're going to need two grated zucchinis, you'll need two grated carrots, you'll need one large red onion, you can use brown or white but I've chosen the red just simply because of the colour, you'll need a packet of ham, um, turkey ham, uh, bacon, it doesn't matter if you like the diced stuff, it is easier to work with so you can go for that option rather than cutting it up yourself. Um, about a cup's worth of grated cheese um, for adding into the dish and also to top the dish at the end. A couple of sticks of celery as well. And we've got five eggs that we need to beat lightly. Now I go for the free range eggs rather than the caged eggs. Again, it's not an industry that I wish to support, so I deliberately choose to purchase the free range or barn laid eggs rather than the caged variety and we'll just put that to one side for the moment. You'll need also uh, a cup of self raising flour and about a third of a cup of virgin olive oil as well. I like the taste of it, you can use vegetable oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, but I prefer the extra virgin olive oil. And we've got some herbs and spices and pepper to taste as well. Okay, so let's add the ingredients together. Wherever possible I do try to buy organic um, fruit and vegetables. I love my local market because it doesn't matter really what time of the year uh, it is, you can pretty much get what you want when you want it from a market. In with the carrot. And the onion. A good idea with this dish is to stir the ingredients as you go, um, simply because you're going to end up with a lot of ingredients in the bowl and you want to make sure that um, you're not actually trying to stir it all at the end because there are quite a lot of ingredients to work with. So we'll just give that a bit of a quick stir. Now I have heard that the brighter in colour your dish when you are preparing it, the healthier it is. And I must agree with that. When you start to look at some of the colours that we're working with today, it really does look fantastic. Okay, that's starting to look quite well mixed. We'll add the celery. Now we'll add some of the cheese, not a lot of it because I do want to put more on top of the dish rather than into the dish. If you like cheese of course you can add more cheese to the recipe at your leisure. Okay, that is looking terrific. We'll drizzle the egg over the ingredients. Again, we add the liquid towards the end because again it helps with penetrating the dish and mixing everything together. Add the third of a cup of virgin olive oil. And again, give 
give that a, just a quick stir. Fantastic. That's looking great. Smelling very, very fresh as well. Now we'll just add some herbs, a generous sprinkling of herbs and spice, and also pepper, without it going up my nose, preferably. Now it's always important when selecting your vegetables from the market to make sure that they're not limp. After all, nobody enjoys a limp carrot or a limp zucchini. Okay, now we have to add the flour. There's quite a bit of liquid in this dish, so the flour is going to help to absorb that. And also help the ingredients to cake together, which is what we want. Stirring the dish uh, continually also helps to aerate it and that's going to be great when the self-raising flour gets mixed in as well. It'll help it rise when we put it in the oven. I don't think you can get away with less than a cup of self-raising flour simply because of the amount of liquid. Bit of trial and error. I've cooked this dish many times and it does take a full cup of self-raising flour. To get that cakey effect. And you can really start to hear, I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but you can actually hear it starting to cake, which is exactly what we want it to do. I'll try and get that liquid off the bottom if we can. It's looking fantastic. And now for the last of the flour. Preparation time for this meal probably varies between about half an hour to 40 minutes. That may sound a lot, but that's only because you've got a lot of grating of ingredients to attend to. Cooking time will vary depending upon your oven. stick to the spoon but that's okay. As I was saying cooking time will vary depending upon your oven. I have a gas oven and it takes about 45 to 50 minutes to cook. That's looking tremendous. Now of course earlier you saw me add 
the diced ham. Of course, the beauty about this dish is that if you wish to make it vegetarian, you can just omit the ham. Personally, I don't mind a bit of meat, so I've gone for the ham option. All right. Oops, we've lost that in the sink. Okay. That is ready to add to our dish and to place it in the oven. Alright, now this is the tricky part. So lightly spoon the dish. into your baking dish. Certainly don't want to waste any of these fantastic organic ingredients. I've taken the liberty of pre-greasing the dish. I just used some canola spray. It just helps it not stick to the bottom when you try to get it out once it's cooked. Don't use too much though because you don't want to affect or influence the flavour. Too much. Okay, and we'll add the rest of our cheese on top. Again, if you're a cheese lover, you can add more to this dish if you like. I just add enough to uh, make sure that it doesn't burn and turns a nice light brown colour. Alright, that's ready for our oven. Okay, that will take, as I said, about 45 to 50 minutes to cook and you'll know that it's cooked when you can press in the center of the dish and it will bounce back at you and it will start to pull away from the sides of the dish as well. Now here's one I prepared earlier. Always wanted to say that. So you can see what the finished product actually looks like. And in terms of serving suggestions, you can have this dish in winter or summer. Um, I've cooked it in summer, so I like to have a nice, fresh, um, cold glass of apple and guava juice with this dish. Um, you can slice this up and place it on a bed of salad greens if you want to. Um, or alternatively, again, you can cook that with some extra vegetables for uh, an additional vegetable intake as well. You can serve it hot or cold, um, so this dish really and truly is a very versatile dish. Thank you for watching. I'm Sandra Stolly, taking the drag out of cooking. Bon appetit, darlings. Until next time. Bye-bye.